Hello, this is the Bible in fewer words. We are Carol and Steve Wells. This is episode 85, Judges, chapter 3. If you enjoy this podcast, consider supporting us at patreon.com forward slash BFW. Hi, Steve. Hi, Carol. We're just moving along slowly in Judges. That's right. It's kind of a chapter at a time. Yeah, it is. But a lot of stories involved in there. There are a lot of stories, yeah. And most of them are kind of interesting and involved. Mm-hmm. Should we start? Sure. Okay, chapter 3, verse 1 through 5. These are the nations that God left to test Israel to find out whether they would obey him. The Philistines, the Canaanites the Sidonians, the Hivites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, and Jebusites. A lot of ites again. Yeah. Why is there this test again? Because God is trying to find stuff out. He's leaving them there to see whether the Israelites obey him. Like, I think if they were really good... Uh -huh. then God would help them wipe them all out. But he doesn't know whether they're going to be good enough for him to help them do that. So this really is a test. It's kind of a test, yeah. I think there's a lot that hangs in the balance. In the next verse, we see that they start to fail the test. Uh-oh. Oh. <laughs> right? Uh-huh. So he doesn't know if they're going to pass the test or not. No, no, he doesn't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there's some things God doesn't know. Uh -huh. uh, but he's going to find out here. Verse 6, the Israelites intermarried with the people of these nations and served their gods. So they kind of failed the test, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's not good for them. No. Nope. No. So they've got all these hostile folks around, mm -hmm. and God's leaving them there to test whether they're going to be good enough or not. And then what do they do? They intermarry with them. And start serving their gods. And serving their the gods. The other people's right. gods. Verse 7. The Israelites did evil in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam and the groves. Serving groves. God's like to hang out in groves, I think. I think so, yeah. So God was angry and sold them to Cushashirathaim, the king of Mesopotamia, for eight years. So God, I would like to have heard that interaction. Hey, Cush, I got some <laughs> bad people here. You try wanna, to unload. Want to buy them? Want to buy them. <laughs> <laughs> that is the strangest expression, that God sold them to this guy. I guess it, what, what happens, they, they're enslaved by this person. Yes. I guess. I don't know. I know. Anyway, God was angry and he sold them to, to this guy with that really strange name. Yes. For eight years. For All eight, right. Mesopotamia. That's pretty far away. When the Israelites cried out to God... He selected a deliverer, Othniel, Caleb's nephew. We've heard of Othniel before. That's right. He delivered a city he and did. got his wife. Got Caleb's daughter for a Oh, wife. Caleb's daughter. Yeah. Verse 10. The Spirit of God came upon Othniel and delivered <laughs> Cushashrithathim into his hand. I think we can just call him Cush from now on. Cush, Cush sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> And there was peace for 40 years, and then Othniel died. And that's all we're going to get about Othniel, and he is the first judge of Israel. Is he? Yeah. All right, so I remember you talking about a cycle last time. Yes. And so that all that cycle happened between verse 1 and verse yes. 11. Sometimes it's very short. They do evil. Uh, they're enslaved. God, God sells them. God sells and them. And then he raises up a hero a deliverer. guy, a, uh -huh, which is going to be a judge. Uh-huh. And then he somehow frees them again. I don't know. Here we don't have too much. Well, yeah, he, God delivered him and Cush into his hand. So I guess he must have killed a bunch of folks. Yes. And then there was peace for 40 years and Othniel died. So verse 12. The Israelites did evil in the sight of the Lord. Oh, my gosh. So this is the first step in the new cycle? Yeah. All right. Right. Step two. Uh-huh. Uh, so God punished them by strengthening Eglon, the king of Moab, who smote Israel with the help of the Amorites and the Amalekites and possessed the city of palm trees. 
What is the city of palm trees? The city of palm trees is Jericho. Really? Yeah, which isn't supposed to exist, right? No, because uh, you're going to have to give up your firstborn and your lastborn if you start constructing that thing. Yeah, that I, can't, I can't say for sure that it's Jericho, but that seems to be the place that the Bible scholars think it is that they're referring to here, even though it's supposed to be destroyed hmm. and never was to be rebuilt. Anyway, there we go. We've got the same thing going on. They did evil, God punishing them, strengthening Eglon. Who's a king. Yeah, who smote Israel, right? Yes. With the help of these other folks. And they served him, I guess, kind of as slaves for 18 years. All right. So those are a couple steps in the cycle. We're yeah. going to keep going here. And the Israelites served Eglon for 18 years. Then they cried out to God, and God sent a deliverer named Ehud, who was a left-handed Benjamite. <laughs> okay. So we'll, we'll find out later in this in the book of Judges that Benjamites have a lot of left-handed people. Do they? Yeah, that's of the tribe of Benjamin. Uh huh. That's that's <laughs> a weird phrase, a left-handed Benjamite. Well, we'll see. It's important because uh -huh. it, as the story goes on. Okay, so Ehud made a two-edged, cubit-long dagger, which he hid under his clothes next to his right thigh. See, under his right thigh. Uh -huh. Ordinarily, you would have it your, on your left thigh so that you could grab it with your right hand. Because he's, he's left-handed. He's left-handed, so he has his right thigh. And you wouldn't expect that, you see, if you're looking for that, for that dagger on the <laughs> left thigh. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll look for that there next time. Ehud then brought a present to Eglon, who was a very fat man, and said, I have a message for you from God. Is that his present? I guess so. Lovely. He's a liar. So then he took the dagger with his left hand and thrust it into Eglon's belly. Yeah. The dagger's handle went in after the blade. Gosh, it's an 18-inch long blade, and the handle went in, too. Oh, my God! And the fat closed in around it so that Ehud couldn't pull it out. Okay, that is not a pretty picture. And the dirt came out. He means blood. No, he means stuff in the intestines, the poop. Oh, the poop, I see. <laughs> <laughs> or the stuff not This is kind that. of bathroom humor that go have going on here. Yeah, it sounds mm -hmm. like it. Yeah. So Ehud locked the door to Eglon's room. When the servants found that he'd locked the door, they said, King Eglon is covering his feet in the, in the summer chamber. Like in the porch. No, Maybe. no, this is a euphemism for going to the bathroom. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's in there. He's locked in the bathroom, right? And it's We've taking him a while. Disturbed. It's taking a while. Uh-huh. Yeah. Maybe it's because they smelt what it smelled like coming under the door, and, uh, you know, his intestines were all over the floor. No. Yeah. I, I, don't, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> um, so after they got over their embarrassment, the servants found a key to open the door and saw that King Eglon was dead. Yeah. Okay. Ehud, by the way, is um, the second judge oh, of, yes. uh, of uh, Israel. So this is the second cycle here. Yep. Okay, verse 26. After King Eglon, after killing, after killing King Eglon, Ehud blew a trumpet on the mountain of Ephraim, and all the Israelites descended the mountain with him. Ehud said to them, Follow me, because God has delivered the Moabites into your hand. And the Israelites killed about 10,000 men, all lusty men of valor. Not a single man escaped. Uh, so the lusty men of valor, are those the men they killed, or no. that's them? Yes, yes, those are the, they, I think so. I think that the Israelites killed 10,000 lusty men of valor oh, okay. among the Moabites, uh -huh. because Eglon was the king of the Moabites. So that's how... That's how we got out of this cycle. He killed Eglon in that kind of gross way, right? Yes, yes. And then he uh, blew his trumpet. Mm -hmm. Every All the Israelites got together and they killed. He said, let's go to war. Yeah, went to war and they killed, they wiped out uh, 10,000 Moabites. Moabites. And the next verse says, there was peace for 80 years. Last time there was peace for 40 years. They tend to be multiples of 40. 40 is a special number. <laughs> if something happens in the Bible, 
it's likely to be 40 years. Okay. Sometimes it's really, if it's a really long time, it might be 80 years. You'd think that they would choose an uneven number yeah. or occasionally yeah, throw you, in a... Yeah, if you wanted us to believe it, you might say 32. it was 72 or something. Yeah. Or, yeah. Okay. Um, and then the last verse for today. Uh, uh, yes, you're right. It is the last verse for today. Verse 31. Sometime after that, Shamgar killed 600 Philistines with an ox goad. Yeah. <laughs> all right, this seems like a, a reduced cycle. Yes, it's all condensed into one verse. So apparently, there must, God must have sold them to the Philistines, and you know they did something bad. God sold them to the Philistines, raised up a deliverer. A deliverer. The deliverer was Shamgar. And he, he killed 600 Philistines with an ox goad. I guess an ox goad is the thing that you use to... I'm picturing it as being the thing that you would attach on a yoke. Oh, like yes, for, yes. A heavy stick or something. Mm -hmm. Anyway, he killed 600 guys with it, whatever an ox goat is. So he is the third judge. Third judge, Shamgar. Shamgar. Okay. Yeah. Well, heck, if there are only... How many judges are there? Twelve. Twelve. Huh. Yeah. Well, um, we're moving along in judges kind of mm -hmm. slowly. Yeah. But it's kind of exciting. Fun stuff. Yeah. All right. Thanks, listeners. See you next time. Bye-bye.